see it here, it just looks clear, but as soon as you've got it on that high contrast, it just pops. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies, and I'm gonna be having a look at some of the Green Stuff World uh, chameleon or color shifting paints, and also what uh, they call their metal interference filters. Okay, so I've got those here, let me just hold them up. So they're little bottles. So they're a 17 mil um, container, Ooh, eyedropper style. And they consist of very special little crystals that reflect a particular color from a, a different angle. So that's why you can get the color shift. So this particular one, they actually have 18 different colors within the color shift range. And then in the interference colors, which are these ones, they have six different colors. Okay, so these are in a, a whole variety of um, uh, clear bases with crystal or colored. So this particular one's a purple with a, a green to gold uh, shift. And this particular one, the interferences are a clear with a pearlescent um, tone to them. So there's a blue, a green, a red, and so on. And so six different colors there. So I've got two different ones that I've picked in the color shift range. So I've got Martian green, which is this purpley one, and cobalt blue, which is this one here. All right, so from the overhead camera, you probably have a better idea of what I've been playing around with. Now I've got a selection of spoons. Now these ones here are what I'm going to be airbrushing onto. All I've done here is I've painted three different tones on them. Okay, so here, actually you can see the white better that way. Okay, so it's a white spoon, highly polished. And then I've just brush painted a gray and a black on this side. Now the white is still in the very shiny original plastic and the gray and the black are in a matte finish. So they're just a uh, water-based paint. They're the artist range from scale 75, which are these. So they're super matte, so hence why there's a matte finish. Now I've chosen these simply because it was very easy for me to do. Uh, and also it'll give me a good contrast of a shiny surface compared to a matte surface. So last night, uh, while I was preparing for all this, so I prepared six spoons actually, and I thought I'd see what the colors actually look like when I brush painted them. Okay, so this is the Martian green, which comes out as a purple. Now I might actually zoom in on this. This is, uh, let's see if I focus that. It's actually a little bit rough because um, initially when I applied it, I applied too much. So that's why you've got these uh, little air bubbles here. And I've tried brush painting it on with a broad brush. And you just see just how much change you get from the different tones okay underneath so the base tones make a big difference on how these appear okay so the white the purple is much more um, prominent as you get into the gray you can see a little bit of that green change coming through but when you go to the black which is the total shadow you can see a lot more of the green coming through and this is just to uh, give you an indication of how well these can brush paint. So even though brush painting can be rough, I mean, this is a bit of a mistake, so don't look at those ugly bubbles. You can actually brush paint these and they'll look uh, pretty good. Okay, this is on a big spoon. So a large area like a spoon or like a body, you wouldn't brush paint, of course. But on something like a small mini, which I do have, and um, I'll brush paint that and I'll let you have an idea of what that looks like a bit later. Okay, so that's the Martian green. Okay, so this is what it looks like from the bottle. You can see just a little bit of shift happening there. Okay, so all these are gonna be semi-transparent and this is where that base color makes all the difference. So you can make a, quite a lot of different um, variations on the color. Okay, so this particular one is the cobalt blue. Okay, this is what it looks like in the bottle. Now the paint in the bottle looks milky because these are the particular acrylics which are milky clears and will dry perfectly clear. Okay, so this has got the blue uh, crystal in it. You can just see a little bit of it on the end. And when you shake these, you can hear that they do come with um, a little ball shaker in them to help you mix them up because the crystals do settle on the bottom. You can see quite a bit of it there. So you do need to shake these up a bit, just to make it nice and even. Just to give you an idea of how this looks. So you can see on the white, the blue is very subtle, but it is noticeable, it is there. And then when you get into the gray, the blue is much more noticeable because of the, simply of the contrast of the base. And then when you get into the black, it becomes a blue. Okay, so it's quite interesting in how these appear. Just from <clears throat> your different base colors. Okay, and then 
The third example I have here is the interference metallic. Okay, so the interference metallic is actually a pearl type. Okay, so you have it here. And it's actually fine, very fine um, pearl uh, flecks in a clear base. Okay, so you can see here, this is a red one. So it's given a slight tint in the white. And then in the gray, you can see it's, it's really brought it through. Then on the black, you can really see the red interference coming through. So you can see there, where you've got absolute shadow, you've got pure black. And then you can see around the top section where you're getting reflection, you can see the red popping through. So that's really interesting. I like that. All right, so they're the, uh, the rough um, examples which I brush painted. Now I'm going to be airbrushing over these and I'll let you see what they're like. Okay, so let's, let's start with this one. This is the interference red. Okay, so I'm just going to shake it up, make sure it's all nicely mixed because you will see all the particles on the bottom. So basically when you mix these, you want to see the top section of the paint similar to the bottom. If the bottom still looks like it's highly pigmented, then you need to shake it up a bit more. Okay, sometimes you just roll it like this. The ball just spins around here. It helps to loosen off the, uh, the settled pigment. And then you can shake it up around like this, even upside down, to get it mixed up. Now some people don't like doing this because what it does is it does incorporate um, uh, more air bubbles. So doing this way you will reduce them, but by shaking it vigorously like this, it will mix it up a lot quicker. Now the consistency of these is reasonably thick, but it is designed to um, airbrush immediately. So when I say thick, I mean thick for an airbrushing paint. But uh, I'm going to be using a 0.3mm airbrush, and it goes through it quite easily. So let's get it ready here. Now I'll pop it here so you might have a better idea of what it looks like when I pour it in. Let's undo the cap. Okay, so I'm just going to apply it along the side here. You'll see it flowing. It is coming out in drips, so it is basically your airbrushing consistency. Just cap it off. Okay, now where's my PC? Let's just make sure we've got the flow. Okay. Alright, so that's ready to go. Now I'll grab this one and we'll start doing one coat. Let it dry and then we'll do another couple of coats. So those, those brush painted ones were three light coats brush painted. Let's do another one here. Okay, so let's pop my airbrush down. Does it fall away? Okay, so this is my first session spraying. And you can see on the black how the red's already coming through. So it's much more even than the brush painted. So ideally, airbrushing these on large surfaces definitely works better. That's quite impressive already. Okay, so if I hold it like this, you can see just a reflection across the top here. It's picking up the red, but you're still getting the black on the bottom. And in the grey, you can see just the hints of it coming through. On the white, not so much. It is very subtle. You can still see it. I can see it here. It's coming up more like a, a pinky. It is a, um, a very subtle effect, but it is definitely there. Okay, the other thing to take note of too is um, this is actually really glossy acrylic paint. And compared to the sample spoon I've got here, see how the black there and the grey is super matte? And you can see on this one that I sprayed, it's already starting to gloss up. Okay, so unlike uh, most mini type and figure type paints, you know, such as the Scale 75 that I've used initially as a primer, that goes super matte. That's what you really want for uh, figures. You want the super matte finish to get the, uh, the tones coming through. This interference um, and also the, uh, the color shifts are a high gloss. So ideally suited for cars and other sort of things like that. On the Mini, I'm going to try to give this um, uh, sort of metallic-y armor effect. 
Okay, so I think I just had enough time to flash off. All right, let's quickly do another coat. Let's see if I can do it while we've got it all zoomed in here. All right, so. Okay. Put my airbrush back. Okay, here we go. Okay, so it's second coat. See on the grey how the red is really coming up now. White is still a bit hard to see on the screen. You may be able to just see the hints of it. I can see it's coming up quite a bit more. It is looking very pearly now. Okay, and when I say pearly, it's looking like a mother of pearl, like the inside of a shell. And then on the black, you can really see the red coming through. Okay, and again, I want to hold it at this angle where you get mainly shadow on the bottom. Because the light's not picking up, you are seeing the black that's underneath, and then the top you can see the red coming through. Okay, so it's quite an interesting effect. Now compared to where I've brush painted it, okay, so there's a brush painted version. You see how obviously airbrushing is going to give you a much smoother finish. Okay, now I'm going to try and give this another coat. You can see how it's dulled off a little bit. That's probably because this coat was probably a little bit dry. Let's see if I make it a bit wetter. Uh, and we'll see if the gloss comes up. Okay. Let's do that again. All right, so I've got the spoon here. Oh, got a bit of nozzle blockage going on here. Let me see if I can alleviate that. Probably had it sitting around for a bit too much. Alright, let me just get some more paint into the cup. Try it again. Okay, this sounds a bit better. All right, let's try that again. Now I'm going for a really wet coat. Okay, so it's really wet now. And you'll be able to see how shiny that is. Obviously it hasn't dried off completely yet and it's going to take a little bit longer to dry. But you can see how that grey section actually doesn't look grey anymore. It's got more of a, um, a pinky mauve look to it. The white is still white. It's just being um, influenced by the little flecks on, uh, on top. So that's going to get this little pink effect as we get into the light. But you can see how the black section is starting to get this little sunset sort of pinky mauve coming through. Okay, so I'm going to park this aside, let it dry off, and I'll show you the next color. So while I'm preparing, I'm just going to clean off this, um, this airbrush. And um, I'll show you the next, uh, which is going to be the cobalt blue. Let's pull that out. Now being water-based, these are just going to clean out with water. So let me just pop that there. I'm just going to clean it out with Piece of tissue. I always like using a bit of tissue and this removes the bulk of the paint that's within the cup. Spray the excess. I'm going to put some water in there. Okay, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of water. 
and then with a large brush, brush it all the way around. Okay, pour off the excess. Okay, final wipe on the inside. So that's pretty clean. And now we'll move on to our next color. Okay, so I'm gonna be using the blue. Okay, so it's a cobalt blue. Okay, we'll mix it up really well. Let's pop my airbrush in my holder there. So you see there's quite a lot of uh, pigment stuck around here as it's settled. So this is going to be that particular blue that I've used over here. Now you can always see this one. This is the one I just sprayed. It's a super wet coat. It's actually looking more like a copper on this side now. So this is a good indication of how different coats will change the appearance of the color. So obviously the more you put on, then the more that that red crystal is going to influence the overall color. So remember that was totally black before. And that's quite different to the very thin coats that I put on here earlier with a brush. Okay, so I think that's probably about right. All right, so let's open this up. Let me brush here, put some drops in. Close it off. Okay, so let's just make sure it all flows right and it comes out clean because there might still be some remnants of the last color that I sprayed through here. All right, so it's coming out nicely. All right, so I'm going to get myself this spoon here and we'll give this a light couple of coats. Okay, so you can already see, just with that light coat, how this has already changed. Let's just zoom it in. Focused, that's it. So you can see how on the white, it's very, very gentle. There is a slight blue coming through. And then you've got the blue on the gray. It's a bit more prominent. And then when you move over to the black, you can see the purple tones and the blue tones coming through now. Okay, so this is a color shift from purple to blue. You can see how it does look sort of dusty because I have put on some super fine coat. It's not a wet coat. I'll do exactly the same as I did with the previous one. So I'll put on another coat and then we'll put on a wet coat and see what that does. Okay, but it's already looking really interesting. Okay, so this is how so far it compares the other one which I brush painted. All right, let's put on another coat. So this one we'll put on a little bit heavier, I think. Okay, so that's what you're getting from this now. So two coats, still looks a little bit dusky. I'm gonna do a very final, really wet coat. So white is really subtle. Okay, so this is why I've chosen to go from the white, the gray and the black. So it gives you a full indication of, from your ultimate highlight of white, all the way to your ultimate shadow of black and how that influences this particular paint. And you see the gray, so that's a mid-tone right down the center. So it's definitely getting a very blue influence. See touches of purple coming through. It's like a ready purple. 
Okay, so let's try and give it the, the really wet coat. I'm trying to hose it on. All right here we go. It's looking a bit wetter now. Okay, so you can see the shine coming up. And you can see the white is still very, very subtle. Although with the, um, it's interesting that with the white side, I actually see a little bit of purple coming through it now. And then there's blue. And then I've got purple across the top here. From this angle, from your top camera, it might be a bit different. Let me see if I'm going to sway it around so you can see. Probably see a bit of purple coming down the bottom now. Really light blue on the top. It's really quite an interesting colour. Okay, let's give that a chance to dry off. And I'll start preparing my last colour, which is going to be this Martian green. Okay, so there's the Martian green. It's quite a rich, great purple. It's got a slightly gold color shift to it. Okay, so let's shake that up. Actually, before I do that, I should clean off this airbrush. All right, let's clean it up here. Get rid of all this excess. some more of this tissue. Let's get it back to the wide angle. All right, so I'm just going to clean out this cup. Spraying out the excess. Now we're just going to put in some water and brush the uh, any paint that could still be here. Okay. Pour it over here. Probably help you if I had one of those cleaning jars. I don't have one handy at the moment, but they're very useful. All right, so I sprayed out the excess. All right, so I'm happy to move on to the next color. All right, let's get our Martian, what's it called again? Martian green. Okay, so that should be good there. Let's open it up. A bit of purple. It's a really nice deep purple. All right, let's just pour that paint into here. Seal it off. All right, I'm gonna just spray it in here, make sure it's flowing right. Okay, it's all good. All right, so I'm going to get my last test spoon and I'll give it same as the others, two light coats and one heavier coat and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so that's, that's one coat. Okay, so you can see this time the white is quite influenced by the purple because that is the, the main base of this particular colour. But then the grey is just a 
a darker tone. You can see a little bit of the green popping through, a sort of goldy green. And then on the black, that's where it's really noticeable. Okay, you can really see that, that green coming out of the, uh, the contrast with the black. From here, I can see the purple coming through as well. Almost looks like a, a dark pink on this side. And then it gets into this violet. And then you've got, actually it looks like it should be a green color because it looks like from black to green, but there is a purple undertone there as well. Okay, let's move on to the second quick coat. Okay, so you can see how the purple is much more pronounced now. On the white, it's mainly purple. Very hard to see the, uh, the color shift on the white. Although it is slightly there. It is, it is changing from my angle where I'm looking across it. I'm trying to get that to come across on the camera as well. Now in the center there, you've got that, uh, that violet that's coming through. It's looking much more violet. Although from here, it, it switches from, uh, almost looks like it's going to black. And then you've got this lighter violet coming through from all the high, um, uh, the highlights. And then the black section is actually looking a lot more purple and there's heaps of green coming through. Really nice tone. Okay, you can still see it's, it's fairly crusty because it's a fairly dry coat. It's not wet at all. So from now I'm going to do the wet coating and we'll bring the gloss up. Okay, I probably need a bit more paint. Maybe not. Let's see how we go with what we have here. Okay, so we've got a wet coat. Let me just get this over here. Looks like I picked up a little bit of dust. You can see those little spots there. All right, so you can see how pronounced this particular purple is now. So this side was all white. You've got that purple coming through. Over here, it's still got this sort of violet -y look, but as I change the angle, it goes to, you see there, how that center is almost looking black now, which is really interesting. And that's just because it was a, um, a darker than white base. You can see hints of that uh, greeny gold coming through. It's almost like a lime gold. And then on the black backed areas, it's much more pronounced. So depending on what you want to achieve, that may be a bit more than you want to, to see. But definitely in this demonstration, it allows you to see the color shift very easily. Okay, so here we go. There we've got our three pieces here. So these three spoons have been airbrushed. These are the same paints which I've brush painted. So they obviously have a slightly different look. I mean, when you airbrush, you do give a, get a much smoother finish, obviously. But what I'm gonna do now is I've got this little figure which I've black based. And I'm gonna brush paint it just so you can see what it's gonna look like uh, with brush painting because it is quite easy to brush paint as well. So a small figure, doesn't really matter if it's not totally even, because you are working with smaller um, details as well. Let me see if I've got that focused. Can't really see what I'm doing here. How about that? All right, let's leave it at that. All right, I'm just gonna get my wet palette ready. Okay, so I've got my wet palette. Stick that over here. Get my selection of paints. Okay, so this one here, that's the interference, red. As you can see, it just looks like white from there. And then I've got, this is the blue, 
shifts into purple, so this is called the cobalt blue. And then I've got the purple. So I'll put the purple over here. Okay, so three dots of paint. Let me get a little paintbrush. Okay, so this is the interference red. Now, what should I do with the interference red? Let's put it over on the, uh, I think on the axe blade. And you see how thin it is. It does pull up fairly quickly. So we'll apply it in a few. Okay, so we can already see it. It's already come up a color. So obviously with the black, it's going to be much more noticeable. Let's just do this side as well. Across the tops. Okay, so there's the interference red. So isn't it amazing, I mean, this is just a black background. Okay, when you see it here, it just looks clear. But as soon as you've got it on that high contrast, it just pops. Okay, that's just one, I guess it's a sort of thick coat. So we can enhance that again by putting more coats as it dries. All right, let's try a different color again. Uh, where should I go this time? Let's go over here. We'll do a lapel. All right, so this is the blue. I do that across the collar, across the top as well. This will give you a, a good indication of what it's going to look like. Okay, so you can see that just transitioning from purpley to a blue. That's just across that one collar around his neck. If you're not too sure where the neck is, that's actually there. Um, there's no head. This was a misprint. It's actually all flat across there, it's like he's got his head chopped off, but it gives you an idea anyway. Okay, so there's a red again. And then you can see the blue. And you see how it just pops and it changes its tone as you look around. It really makes you mini, really interesting. Okay, so let's clean that off and let's do the purple. Okay, so with the purple, maybe I'll just do the, um, the other lapel. Right, let's get it at a right angle where I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, and so there, hopefully you can see the sort of purple coming through. It's probably going to be better if I paint a larger area. So let's just paint the whole arm. So I guess you can sort of see what I mean by um, brush painting is not such an problem when it's a small um, item like this because if you don't give it a really smooth coat it doesn't really matter because you're not looking for a super super smooth finish anyway but you're looking for overall appearance Okay, so that's a purple all the way on that arm. Now let's do this blue on the other side. Sorry, I keep moving this out of the frame. All right, so this is transitioning from purple to blue. Hopefully you can just see that there. Okay, that's the whole top of that arm. Then this side has got the purple. So it's got a little bit of green effect.
and I'll go back to this this red see how it's starting to come up a little bit pink now with the extra coat compared to that side actually it's hard to see for lack of reflection you can see the blue on this side it's definitely very very pronounced got the purple on this side which is a bit harder to see because it is quite dark but you can see how it's just transitioning through all those different colors so that's what it's going to look like when you brush paint it let's see you can see it from there maybe not so much oh well it's a bit hard to see um, this is the purple which was airbrushed and see how smooth it is white on this side gray and then black so it's transitioning through all those colors this is the blue okay so the white i can actually see the purple from this angle i don't know if you can pick it up on the camera though see that through the gray and then on the black this is really impressive blue but i can see it going through all the purple tones here too maybe you can just see it there see the purple coming through just on the edge of that black and then this is the interference red so this doesn't actually change um tone um what this does do it's called interference because depending on the angle you either see the base color or you see variations of the top coat coming through so you can see on the black it's quite prominent red see a little bit of um, the highlights coming through that's going pinky but you can see the gray underneath and then on the white it's super super subtle okay so that's it that is my demonstration of the color shift paints from green stuff world so that was two different uh, color shifts uh, there's what was it there was a uh, martian martian green which is the purpley bit and then we've got uh, cobalt blue which is on this arm and then we had the interference red okay so really interesting and um, actually let me just pull those over here so you can see them more together I'll pop those over here there we go So I find a sweet spot. Is that it? There we go. Okay, so there you go. Very interesting indeed. And basically the advantage or the gimmick of these is when you move the spoons around, they have quite a different effect. Okay, so you can see green coming through. This one, you've got blue tone and purple color shift. And then this one, you've got the interference red coming through. It's giving a really interesting tone. Okay, so there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, these three here. These are from Green Stuff World. And in the color shifting chameleons, there's 18 colors. And in the interference colors, there's six colors. So check them out. They're really fun to use. <laughs>